This is the bad guys. Oh, man, I love this movie. It is one of the Frenchest things I've ever seen. Um, and I mean that because the actual director, uh, Perry, Perry Parafel, is French. Of course he is with a name like that. And he's worked on stuff like uh, Lucky Luke Goes West. Again, another movie that I absolutely love just for its, its comedic timing. I love the civilized world. Yeah, look at that. Look at those illustrations. Those are like the Frenchest things I've ever seen in my life. I love it. The credits for this movie are fantastic. It's uh, just, this is great. You could tell just because, well, first of all, the animation is just like really beautiful and snappy and super expressive. You've got these like really simplified main figures, like the bodies, everything's all very sort of soft shaded. And then the eye outline is just like pure black. Everyone in this movie is wearing mascara. It's hilarious. And then, of course, you have sort of uh, taking after the Spider-Verse. You've got little accent lines that are drawn on. You'll Yeah, like the cheek lines right there. Look at that. Just very, very soft form lines on clothing and the face and fur. And, you know, the little squint between the eyebrows and everything. Crazy. Yeah, look at that. That's a that's a Spider-Verse move. The, the, the sort of fast animation, which is appropriate because this... Oh, it's also based off a series of books, which is weird. The art style in the books is, um, I would have to say, like early, early 2000s. It reminds me of something like uh, Slave Labor Comics would publish. Of course, these character designs are just wonderful. Oh, oh, the the the, the trans community is sort of uh, latched on to uh, Miss Tarantula because in the book she was Mister Tarantula. Which, you know, either or, you can argue that uh, they were just like, ah, we need, we need to fill out the ranks with, with girl. But if you want to have it that in your head canon, that she went through a transition, that's, that's awesome too. No one's going to stop you. Unless, unless the author turns out to be a huge a-hole, like JK or uh, Doug to Naple. By the way, Doug, worms are uh, hermaphrodites. Just saying. But anyway, getting back to this, this is wonderful. This has got... Just some of the, the snappiest animation I've seen in a while. It's an entirely different beast from, again, Spider-Verse or even uh, the recently released Puss in Boots sequel. But it still has a bunch of that, like, snappy drop frame animation that, like, really makes everything pop. And again, that's kind of going back to, like, uh, the Chuck Jones style, where after he made uh, the Dover Boys, he figured out, oh, you can get a lot of a good movement and good laughs just from having people do quicker animation. I think Warner Brothers, as soon as they real they were like, they hated the Dover Boys because they were like, oh no, Disney has, they over animate everything. Um, but when they realized that people loved it and I guess it got uh, nominated. So they were like, oh yeah. And it came under budget. So they were like, yes, yes. Do more of that. Definitely. Um, also, the 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 bond that these characters have is like really nice and believable it's the movie itself of course is about a, a group of misfits who find um find their purpose sort of in each other they don't even do it for like the money at this point they do it just because you know they like the challenge and everything which is a double-edged sword because as uh, the governess fox points out they will get sort of sloppy, you know, start doing things for ego. I feel sorry for them. What? These so-called bad guys are really just second-rate has-beens. Behind their amateurish antics and, frankly, unoriginal capers. I mean, really, another bank. Damn, girl, was your dad a rabbit? No. <laughs> Surprise! The plot is they end up getting caught uh, during a bust, and they get a chance to reform themselves the bad guys become the good guys so we can stay the bad guys you know what I'm <laughs> bad guys acting good it's the ultimate bad guy thing i guess you got sam rockwell as this as the wolf uh i know that's uh kevin michael richardson is uh shark i don't know who the rest of the cast is i gotta look it all up 
Oh, I know that the guinea pig is played by played by that one guy who's just in everything right now. He was uh, Onion on Apple and Onion. He again uh, the the IT crowd. Right, Harry. Did you see that ludicrous display last night? Extremely uh, distinctive voice. It's not a bat. Does he know what a bat is? <clears throat> As I was saying. And of course, uh, you know, there's a little bit of a love story in this uh, in this movie, which is rather nice. I like the fact that at this point in the story, she totally knows who he is. But uh, spoiler alert: she is sort of a former thief herself who. Uh, just went legit on her own. Over the course of the movie, the the other guys learn that they want to be good because they there's like it feels good and they're they're a family. Oh wow! Is this is this wagging? I was gonna say this movie has it has a twist villain, which is fine. That's that's sort of uh, in vogue now just to do that, and the twist villain is rather obvious if you just pay attention. If you uh, look at the guinea pig's manservant, it couldn't be any more blatant. He's got a little fez. But, you know, uh, more importantly, I think this movie sort of establishes twist allies. There's actually, like, a fantastic in this movie. Uh, that part I won't spoil, but there's a sort of a double agent. Uh, working like it feels like there's a betrayal and then uh, a reaffirming of, of of friendship and allyship. It's great. In the biggest twist of this movie, they kind of just really blur past this whole rehabilitation process, which I could not be more happy about. I thought they were just going to go for a bunch of easy gags over the the course of like the majority of the middle chunk of the movie. Um, but really, it only lasts like about maybe 10 minutes, and then we get into the whole meat of the actual caper. Again, uh, more development between uh, Boxington and Wolf, and stumbling upon the actual conspiracy, which does take up, I would say, the majority of the movie. Good pacing. Really good pacing. We just get to the meat of the situation, which is Wolf does want to go good and and be a better person and he's got a lot of complicated issues to work out and this movie doesn't bog it down with like a bunch of like useless gags or stretch out the middle it, it's all meat and it all just really works this is like the best animated sequence in the whole movie but also like made me to realize that Diane doesn't have a tail. A tail would be a definite giveaway. But, like, does she not just have one? There's not, like, a, a species of of, of short-tailed fox, is there? Weird, because when I see fan art, they definitely add the tail in. In fact, here, let me just look that up now. Uh, while I'm here, I'm just gonna... I know I've seen her with tails before. Let's check out what you freaks made. Yeah, yeah, yeah. First image is like one. She's got a tail. Uh, this evening dress. She's got a tail. This uh, 3D image. She's got a tail. Uh, tail, 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 tail. No tail. Okay, that's the first like actual on model. Tail, tail. Yeah, isn't that weird? That whole phantom tail situation. It's just, it's just a really interesting thing. Like what works for a movie. And what works for, like, actual storytelling. Like, again, you had to hide the tail in order to make it seem like you didn't know who this character was or would be. Or even identifiable to other characters in the movie world. What I'm saying is I just like to see Diane's tail shake. Now, come on, let's get inside. You look like you just busted out of a prison. <laughs> <laughs> Doubling back on the style is just how unique it it stands out amongst well frankly uh all the stuff that disney has been doing there's a certain sort of homogenization that's been going along it just looks so radically different from anything else we've seen in a while and i think that's partly due to again uh spider-verse sort of opening the floodgates on experimenting with uh, the 3D style. 
Uh, but I, I'm, I'm also thinking back on back when Disney would have tried something like this. There was the short called Inner Workings about the, you know, the office worker and he talks with his body. You know, the one with the thick redhead. Um, and that had a unique style. And I think they were trying to experiment with that really early on, but they never implemented it. They were always like what you what you call like the Pixar style. And it's just, it's weird if they maybe just had pulled the trigger a little bit earlier on that. They seem to have done that with, uh, what was that one movie? Strange Worlds, Stranger Worlds. Too little too late and too, I don't know. I don't know what the deal with that. I guess it was just like a, I hear that it's perfectly fine. And that just goes to show you that DreamWorks does experiment with the variety of styles they have. They will make a Guardians when try to be overly detailed on everything and then they will turn around and make a boss baby where everything's sort of simplified a little more and it, uh, the world's a bit more abstract. Also, I guess while we're at it, I might as well comment on the new DreamWorks logo intro that everyone like lost their their shit over a couple a month or two ago and then just stopped talking about it because that's how internet discourse works. Uh it's fine. I feel that like it's a, it's long, of course it is, but I feel it comes from like a marketing standpoint. Like, stop, parents, grandparents, stop calling our movies Disney. We're DreamWorks. Even my even when we went to Shrek, the first Shrek movie, my grandparents uh, took me and uh, a bunch of my cousins. They were all like, "Oh, well, this is a Disney movie." It's like, no. It's not Disney. Nope. Sucker. Is it? I'm going to freeze frame it right here because uh, where it says Eaton Cohen, uh, who is the executive producer, he's also the, the screenplay writer. So the writer of this movie. And for a second there, I thought it was Ethan Cohen, of course, of the Cohen brothers. And I was like, no wonder this movie's so good. Uh, but no, this is Eaton Cohen. Uh, another person, in fact, even his Wikipedia says not to be confused with Ethan Cohen. Uh, C O E N. This is Eaton and uh, C O Hen. And uh, you know he's he's known for some stuff. He did he wrote Idiocracy, which is um, aged poorly in some places. Uh, he wrote he wrote Tropic Thunder again. Depending on your, you know, some some of that a little bit rocky. Madagascar 2 is fine. I want to focus on Men in Black 3, which is also okay. Then he also wrote Get Hard and Holmes and Watson. Right before he wrote this. Uh, wow, talk about a turnaround between Get Hard and Holmes and Watson. Uh, How? Why? I will take it. You see, it's sort of a self-photograph. Hey, girl! Hey, girl! He also wrote Boots and Boots, uh, The Last Wish, which is fantastic. Again, great turnaround. Oh, he wrote for Recess. Okay, never mind. He's got chops. He's got chops. And he also won an Annie for uh, Best Writing on uh, King of the Hills. Overall, I would have to say this was pretty amazing movie and uh, if they were to make a sequel to it i don't know how what, what, what would what would where would you uh take off from there i don't want to have a uh a minions uh despicable me situation here i think this is just a pretty good fun way to just let it be although the fact that they were introduced in that new dreamworks intro might indicate that they have some more ideas with these characters and uh yeah I would be welcome to that. Yeah, go check it out. It's great. And check out more French stuff. Uh, anything by Zalium. Missed. You missed us, Lucky Luke.